Hello and welcome to a 10 minute run through of our heat network sizing tool. This is a Excel spreadsheet used for sizing the pipes, working out thermal losses, buff store sizing, boiler sizing um, for a heat network. This version is set up to calculate the sizes for 480 properties um, with a plant room feeding 10 blocks of 48 properties. Okay, now the spreadsheet is split into a number of worksheets. If I run through them, we have the main summary page. So, this is where we put in our inputs and see our outputs. Now, behind this, we have a pipe sizing spreadsheet which covers all the pipes on the index run. Um, and this is where all the maths is done so the pipe selection pressure loss calculations velocity calculations thermal loss calculations then we also have a plant room sizing system which covers boiler sizes versus buffer sizes for a typical day's hot water loading we have a table of pipes this is used to calculate the thermal loss and there's a cost in there, so we're estimating the cost of the pipe work of the system. Energy use pie chart, working out where the energy is going. And we have a energy generation sheet, which works out the proportion of heat to delivered by a heat pump and the proportion of heat delivered by a gas boiler. So a low grade and a high grade heat source. This is used to determine carbon footprints. Okay, now if we turn to the summary, we have a series of inputs. So if I run through them very quickly, we have the dwelling peak domestic hot water load. So this is 45 kilowatts currently based on an instantaneous heat interface unit. The central heating load, 3 kilowatts. The differential pressure required across the heat interface unit. The peak temperature supplied from the plant room at peak load. And the peak temperature supplied from the plant room during summer. The return temperature from the heat interface unit when running hot water the return temperature when running central heating and these can usually come from independent test results the number of occupants per property the flush rate the HIU how quickly it purges cold water from the primary system peak erosion velocity so this is a check on the maximum velocity in pipe work we want over time fixed domestic hot fixed domestic hot water use per property per day in litres and per person per day and, and these go hand in hand with the temperature rise for these volumes to work out the amount of energy used for each property for hot water per day for central heating we have the number of hours running at peak load so this will be the three kilowatts so there'll be 1800 kilowatt hours of hot of central heating per year the insulation thickness on the flow pipe work and on the return pipe work then we have our design pipe velocities so this system sizes to minimum pipe velocities these are 0.5 typically and 0.75 mil on pipe work on flow pipe work within buildings where we want to keep the pipe work smaller the heating season, how, so how long the network wants to run at peak temperatures for heating use. Um, standby return temperature from the heat interface unit, again from um, independent testing, as is the standby flow rate, and whether the system runs on hot water priority. But these all combine to give us various outputs, um, the peak loading for the whole site, the pressure drop requirements across the site in, in winter, summer, across the network and the buildings, uh, and pipe work velocities 
and we also get a check on the time taken to deliver water t to um, properties if we let lateral pipe work go cold so this here are 24 seconds now we have a nice system here nice and efficient um, now if I run through quickly how it works right before we get into getting into the, the mathematics behind in the spreadsheet will be for the next video this is purely to go through typical use of it and really to show how heat networks can be um, less efficient so we'll we'll run through and change some settings and see how the efficiencies change um, now we'll leave the general loading the same so the, the peak domestic hot water and the central heating loads we'll change the operational parameters so let's keep rather than a system that goes 90 down to 65 we'll keep it as fixed so 85 degrees all year round domestic hot water return we'll go for a system um, uh, with a less efficient heat exchanger and temperature control system return from the central heating well unbalanced systems um, radiators with a 10 degree drop these can happily have return temperatures at 60 degrees C three occupants per property stays the same now we can see the efficiency is starting to go up uh, down the loss is going up as we go flush rate let's put that down to 10 litres a minute which is maybe more average now we see the delay time has, has jumped up um, this is a combination of pipe sizes increases and the flush rate of the HRU the peak erosion velocity is the same the hot water use will keep the same insulation now let's go down to a fairly poor level of insulation so 20 millimeters on the flow and the return um, and we'll put our standby flow rate at one litre per minute 60 litres per hour at a temperature pretty much similar to the flow so 10 degree drop and we'll take hot water priority off so the heat loss is now getting up towards 50 percent now this is close to the SAP assumption based on recorded performance of heat networks in the field now with this extra heat loss the number of hours of central heating used by a property will be dropping because there'll be a lot of heat taken out of the fabric of the building on the pipework system which isn't metered so a reflection of this will drop this to say 400 hours per year and now we see we're dropping over the 50 percent losses if you were to then take the occupancy is lower than expected and the hot water use is lower than you designed for so the hot water use per person let's just put that down to say it drops 20 litres plus 20 litres per person per day now losses compared to the load are becoming very very significant I mean most of the energy generated has been lost now so this this spreadsheet gives you a way to work through different sizing and operational parameters now if we go even further and take pipe sizing which is one of the critical factors and so this pipe sizing spreadsheet is actually giving us pipes of 22 millimeter copper into properties now we quite often see pipe work larger than that and in reflection of that we will change the velocity within buildings to 0.2 so this is below what we'd like to see as a 0.5 minimum and 0.75 for performance reasons okay then the next video I'll go through the mathematics behind the spreadsheets itself Thank you very much for listening.